Okay, we all know about how Puffy got that Lifetime Achievement Award, a bad boy. <laughs> Puff, the magic dragon live by the sea. <laughs> Do Puff deserve a Lifetime Achievement Award? <clears throat> I mean, everybody talk about how he done ripped off bad boy orders. I done talked about it. Wendy done talked about it. Maester did a song dissing him recently. Everybody on bad boy is broke so puffy. But we're not going to say puffy the only the only one doing it. Shit Knight ripped off orders. Def Jam, Rockefeller, Murder Inc., Ruthless, Cold Chilling. <laughs> All these record labels. The ripped off borders. So, Puff ain't by himself. But if we gonna get if we gonna get on musical achievements and business ventures and being an entrepreneur and starting his own clothesline and champagne and, and got a restaurant, yeah, Puff deserve it. I mean, he put in a lot of work. He might have fucked his owners over, but he promoted them until. He, he didn't need them no more. So yeah, Puff, I say Puff deserve it on that, on that part, but he still fucked over his orders. <laughs> look at how Lil' Kim look. <laughs> Looking like a fucking, look like a big bird prostitute or something. She look like a hooker ostrich. I mean, Lil' Kim. You go in front of Michael Jackson, look, she look like Michael Jackson with a penis. <laughs> she look like what Michael Jackson would look like if Michael Jackson came out and got a set change. <laughs> but hey, bad boy for life. We're going to see how many more people he rip off and fuck over it. We're going to see who else is, get, is affected by the bad boy curse. Death row curse. No other labels other than Bad Boy and Death Row got a huge body count. Artists from both sides in that little fake East Coast, West Coast beef are dying left and right. I ain't got to run them down. Look for yourself who done died on B Bad Boy and Death Row folks going to jail. Everybody know Puffy and Shook were agents of Satan. <laughs> they both sold their soul to the devil, so... What happened? Folks end up dead, bodyguards getting killed, folks getting shot, going to jail, all that. Too many bodyguards getting killed, artists getting killed, and unsolved mysteries. And the closer you get to the, the solution of who did it, another mystery come up. And they are profiting off this Tupac and Biggie who killed them, who shot them back in the 90s. I mean, damn, they done did TV shows about it, they done did documentaries about it, they done, they done wrote books about it, and ain't nobody got a, ain't nobody can no conclusion. No matter who you think did it. <laughs> soon, they, soon they find out who did it, they tell you somebody else did it. Then this person did it. You got all these people who was there at this night. Everybody was there at these two tragic events. Everybody trying, everybody still asking questions. Well, uh, how how he get shot? Well, but then again, you gotta look at the music Pog and Biggie were making. Both made good music, but they played and flirted with death. When you make songs about killing yourself, dying young. Being, being, being rolled around, being, being put in the casket in a hearse. When you make songs like that, unfortunately, it gonna come back and bite your ass. Hate to say it, but when you make songs about killing, homicide, suicide, and pimping, and going to jail, and being a thug and a gangster and a mafia crime boss, you get what's gonna come to you. Hate to say it, I know, I know it's entertainment. I mean, but you end up dead and in jail. Too many rappers are getting killed now over that BS. All I can say, watch your lyrics. 